joining us for this month's Science Olympiad STEM session on solar power. We are so lucky to have a special industry insider with us today. Brian Haug, president of Continental Energy Solutions and an expert in clean energy. If you've been paying attention to world events lately, you know that energy dependence is a crucial issue, not only to scientists concerned with climate change, but also to the average consumer who's feeling the pinch as they pump gas or heat their homes. According to the U.S. Energy Information Administration, renewable energy production only accounts for 20% of total U.S. electricity generation annually, with solar power coming in at just 2.8%. Meanwhile, fossil fuels like coal and natural gas provide 60% and nuclear energy rounds out the total with another 20%. The United States clearly has a long way to go towards developing its solar power capacity. While the largest global solar energy projects exist in India, China, and the UAE, the Solar Star Farm in California ranks as the number one solar producer at home, with 1.7 million solar panels generating 579 megawatts of power, enough to supply 250,000 homes. We really need young scientists like you to discover new ways to power our homes, vehicles, devices, and infrastructure. To get you prepared, Science Olympia has a wealth of events in the energy sector, from save the ice and keep the heat at our elementary level to wind power and thermodynamics in the middle and high school divisions. Our current solar power trial event challenges students to build a heat collecting device and make predictions about its efficiency. While this month's Myazo lesson plan includes building a heat generating oven toasty enough to make s'mores. In the interview you're about to hear, Brian talks about his experience as an engineer and business owner, as well as his perspective on the role that parents and guardians play in Science Olympiad. He coached both of his children in Science Olympiad from kindergarten to senior year, watching their love of science grow. I think you'll find his advice really powerful. Hi, Brian. Thanks so much for joining us today. So can you tell us what do you do? So I am the president of Continental Energy Solutions and uh, we are a solar, voltaic and energy storage design and installation company. And uh, what that means is you've likely seen solar panels or modules as we call them uh, on the roofs of some of the homes in, uh, in the areas in your neighborhood. And what we do is design and install same sort of systems, but not for homes. We actually do it for commercial properties like uh, Target and Walmart, for schools and universities, and uh, even on larger commercial properties uh, like you'd see on a farm field when you're driving down the highway. And our engineers design the systems and then our electricians and technicians physically uh, install them uh, on the rooftops and in the fields. Wow, that's so cool. Where did you go to college or graduate school and what did you study? Sure. Uh, I have a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering from the Missouri School of Science and Technology in Rolla, Missouri. I have a master's degree in nuclear engineering and a master's in business, business administration from the University of Chicago Booth School of Business. As an engineer, what does a typical day look like for you? So a typical day includes everything from talking to potential customers about the benefits of solar, uh, working with my project managers who oversee our projects and, uh, and our engineers who design the solutions and put the drawings together. Uh, at any given time, we may have 20 or 30 projects going on at the same time at various levels of, of uh, completion and I make sure our team has all the resources and support they need in order to get their get their jobs done. What excites you about your work? I enjoy working with the customers to find uh, ways to reduce their energy consumption by using solar and storage solutions. Uh, each project has its own unique challenges and working with the customers and our project managers and engineers to design and install systems that solve their problems is, uh, is very fulfilling. Uh, a customer may, may want something as simple as reducing their electric bill by creating their own energy from the sun, or they may want to have a solar and storage solution that allows them to keep the facility operating when the grid goes down. And we design and install a micro grid such that they can do exactly that when there's power outages in their area or they're in their, in their uh, town. 
So what are some of the bigger things happening in the energy sector today? There's a significant shift in the country to move away from fossil fuels um, for energy generation like coal and oil and natural gas and more towards renewables like wind and solar PV like I do and hydroelectric systems and even hydrogen uh, energy generation, just to name a few. Uh, the, the, uh, the goal, of course, is to reduce the emissions from hydrocarbons into the environment that uh, come from burning fossil fuels to, to limit the effects of global warming and pollution that can cause many health problems. And that's, uh, that's happening all across the country and as a matter of fact, across the, across the world. Brian, do you collaborate with other STEM professionals? How and who? I do. Uh, on a daily basis, I collaborate with uh, other STEM professionals. Most of my colleagues are STEM professionals. Uh, and the energy sector that, that uh, we participate in is filled with scientists and mathematicians and engineers. Um, even the manufacturing of the products that we use in the, in the solar world uh, are, are, are employ many of the scientists that, uh, that help create the, 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 the components. Um, many of these I don't work with directly on a day-to-day -day basis, but we collaborate by them publishing articles that, on the studies that they're doing and, and uh, us in the community read and, and comment and, and collaborate with them. Uh, in the solar and storage world, uh, we collaborate with several engineering professionals such as structural engineers for rooftop solutions to make sure that the building can support the array that we're installing. Uh, we collaborate with civil engineers that do soil testing and erosion control and mass excavation designs for the ground mount solutions. Uh, there are landscape engineers and architects that design pollinator friendly uh, and low maintenance grasses to put down underneath the ground mount arrays that we install. And then of course, there's always safety engineers that uh, make sure that the projects are, are uh, are, are safe and and uh, we're using our appropriate fall protection. And of course, there's drafts people that uh, that that are employed by us uh, that that do all the drawings for AutoCAD and, and Revit and such. Um, when you started working as an engineer, what surprised you about your work? So when I started when I started working as an engineer, I, I anticipated it would be more of the same stuff that I did in school, but wasn't sure exactly how that was gonna work out and how I was gonna get paid for doing that. But what surprised me was uh, no matter what task I was given by the supervisor that I was working for, the logical, critical, and holistic thinking that we had to use in college was the most important skill I had learned. Uh, it wasn't proving theorems or solving quadratic equations. It was the problem solving skills that that I learned that served me well over my, my engineering career. When did your kids start in Science Olympiad? My son didn't start Science Olympiad until he was in middle school, but my daughter actually started in kindergarten in an after school club and then uh, picked it back up when she entered middle school as well. What were some of your favorite memories from your family's time with Science Olympiad? My focus in, uh, with participating with the kids in Science Olympiad was uh, typically in the build events. And for both kids, they participated in Storm the Castle and Mousetrap Vehicle and Bottle Rocket and Mission Impossible. And uh, uh, I enjoyed them watching them become creative and uh, trial and error on building these, uh, these contraptions to do the most, uh, you know, absurd solutions, the absurd tasks. What are some of the most important lessons your kids learned in Science Olympia that still resonate today? They both learned typically, or similarly like I learned, how to think uh, through problems that they had to solve and use trial and error time and time again to make things work. Uh, there isn't always one correct answer for a problem and understanding that has given them self-determination to try, fail, and try again as they've gotten older. What advice do you have for students interested in a career in STEM? 
I think the most important thing they need to understand is they don't think that a career in STEM is going to be boring and monotonous. Uh, we're tackling big problems and making the world a better place to live, but engineers still function in the real world very well. We play sports, we have hobbies, uh, and we have fun when, when we're not at work. So what do you like to do in your free time? For me, I, uh, I play golf as much as I can, uh, do a lot of woodworking, and uh, I've been renovating homes with my wife uh, in my spare time, in our spare time, for the last 30 years. Uh, the logical thinking I've learned is being, uh, by being an engineer uh, has played out in every part of my life. Uh, my STEM career has been extremely fulfilling. That was such a great interview. I hope you love learning about solar power, the energy industry, and ways to get the most out of Science Olympiad. I encourage you to try some of the activities and the free lesson plans and guides posted to our MySO page. Thanks for tuning in.